So what I have then is I have the rate of change of A, and I just want to write it like this. If I look at this reaction and it's going V1 and V minus 1, then V1 is going to lose a certain amount. It has a rate constant, and we write that as the concentration of A and the concentration of B. So the forward reaction, I put a negative sign in there, because in that direction you're losing A and B. But in the opposite direction, if you look at the reaction which goes from here to there, it increases A. So it's plus, and it's K minus 1, and in this case it depends upon the concentration of Y, and the concentration of Z. And at equilibrium, dA by dt is equal to zero. And so therefore, what you have is K1 over K minus 1 is equal to Y to the Y, Z to the Z, divided by A to the A, B to the B and that is equal to K at equilibrium. K is equal to K1 over K minus 1. Approach equilibrium. Okay, here is an approach to equilibrium. What I have is time is against concentration. I have an initial concentration of A, it's just going to be A going to Z. And I've got a forward reaction and a reverse reaction, K1 and K minus 1. I rate constants forward and reverse. And so what's happening here is you have one mole of A and it's decreasing. And as it decreases in time, it's going to increase Z until you get to equilibrium. And when you're at equilibrium, there's no noticeable change in the concentrations, right? They're constant. And so if I were to, say, change the constants, you get different values depending upon the constants. If I have a large forward rate and a small reverse rate, it's going to make a difference between what happens. If I put the two rates equal, I got 0.7 there, so let me put 0.7 there, 0.7. When they're equal, and let me put the concentration there equal to, equal to 1, nothing happens because you start off with the same concentrations on both sides and the forward and reverse reactions are equal so there's no change. But if I have, if I have they, them different and I make the rate constant different, then what you'll find is that the reaction will take place until you've converted one. It depends upon the rate constant. So let me, let me test this equilibrium. That's the concentration, 1.1, of Z, and this is the concentration of A, and that's equal to the ratio of 7 to 2.18. So the ratio of those is equal to K, and at long time, you have no noticeable change, and so the ratio of those concentrations at equilibrium are the rate constant and equal to the forward and reverse rates. I don't care what you take. I can take this as, um, I'll take it as something like this. That's where the chemical kinetics is, and this is at equilibrium. So now when I look at the rate constant ratio, it's 0 0.911 to 0 0.777, 0 0.911 to 77, it's 1.18 is the ratio of the forward and reverse rates. Now what I'm going to do is test the equilibrium and look at the, con at the concentrations. Click on the Z line. Okay. okay, click on the Z line there. Okay, and I'm going to click on this line here. And so the ratio is the same. This is the concentration. It just picks it up from, the, from measuring pixels. So... What I'm showing here is the forward and reverse rates are related then to the equilibrium constant when you have dynamic equilibrium. And so the rate constants determine how far the reaction will go, and the ratio of the equilibrium concentrations will be in the same ratio as rate constants. So, and it's not just true for A going to Z, it's true for any reaction with all the, all the different uh, stoichiometric coefficients. And of course, this is when you haven't reached equilibrium. And if I put this as 100, then, of course, boom, it goes down and you're at equilibrium. So it shows how dynamic equilibrium is related to the rate constant.
I would recommend that you play with that uh, simulation uh, and work it out until you feel comfortable with the ideas. The next thing to talk about is the pressure dependence. I don't think I've got much time in a minute to say much about it, so I'll, I'll finish here.